Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Thought Leader Friday. We got the incredible Jenny Weimert here from Orlando, Florida, kicking us off in our inaugural edition of Thought Leader Friday. I'm going to hand it over to Debbie, who's going to be interviewing Jenny and walking through a number of questions that I'm sure you guys have as well. Uh, and throughout the interview, feel free to say hi in the comments, uh, leave some questions for Jenny, and we'll see if we have some time at the end to grab them. Uh, so thanks for being here. Take it away, Debbie. All right. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Thought Leader Friday. I'm super excited to bring Jenny back. Many of you heard um, Jenny speak in our webinar conference call that we did uh, back in February. And so knowing that she is a real estate icon in Orlando, we wanted to hear from her on the changes with the coronavirus and all that has been impacted in her area. So Jenny, why don't you just give us a brief introduction uh, for those of you who haven't met you, a little bit about your team and, and the Weimark Group Realty. Sure. Well, thanks for having me, friend. Um, I'm, uh, I've, you already said, Jenny Weimer from Orlando, Florida. I run a team with my husband. Um, we have a boutique brokerage that operates only in a team model. So we refer to ourselves as a team rich. Um, very dependent model where we provide leads and a lot of admin support for our agents. Uh, we have 52 people on our team, approximately 40 agents. We just went on a hiring spree before the pandemic. Um, we did 900 units last year at around 265 million. Um, and we are striving to serve a thousand families this year, God willing. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've got all the pieces to the puzzle in place. We just got to keep those houses selling. So tell me, um, let's start with the team and motivation and mindset. So since you went on that hiring spree, tell me, how are you keeping your team focused and motivated with the current conditions? You know, um, it's still a little early because we're not necessarily feeling it 100% yet because we had a pipeline. And so, you know, we're still closing out the pipeline. And, um, you know, the people who were kind of taking a break in November, December, maybe are feeling it. But for the most part, most of our agents had a pipeline. So that fear um, and panic hasn't necessarily set in, um, but what we're, you know, what we're reassure, doing to reassure our agents and our staff is that, you know, we have no intention of doing any layoffs with our team. Um, we have full intentions of, you know, working with our agents to make sure that they are productive um, and just, you know, trying to show confidence that, you know, I went through um, 9 11 as a realtor. We've gone through um, the 06 to 2010 market um, where we were dragging everybody through on our backs, you know, through the mud to sell houses. Um, so just trying to instill some confidence in our team that we are, we, are, we are essential. We do need housing. Whether it's, you know, a buyer's market, a seller's market, whatever it is, we will find the market. We have the resources, we have the tools, we have the expertise. We will sell homes. It just may look different. It may feel different. It may take more effort um, and it might be harder, but we will do it and we're not afraid. And, um, and we've been telling our team for three years that we're preparing for a shift. We're preparing for a shift and, and we have been. And We've been working hard on our database to make sure that it's about relationships and not just buying leads and turning and you know churning. Um, you know we've 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 been saving for a rainy day. We've been waiting for this opportunity for the market to you know um, shift so we can jump in and take more market share. So, you know, did we anticipate a pandemic? Uh, no. Um, do we have any idea what to do through a pandemic? Not really. But what we do know is that people are gonna need housing and um, we will be there to serve them. And we are, we are absolutely positioned well to do so. So we're just trying to keep them, trying to instill confidence as a leader, but also you know, letting them know, but it's gonna take all hands on deck. You know, the days of us feeding you leads on a platter and you know, all you have to do is not screw it up those days are over. We're going to have to band together, come together and, you know, make this happen. Um, but we feel like we have the, the best team to do that. So, yeah. Well, understanding that the team of 40 is over the limit of how many people can be at your house at once. So how are you staying connected with your team and how are you keeping their spirits high? What are some fun things? I know you're always about fun. So what are some fun things you guys are incorporating? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the team, we, we have such a good culture on our team to begin with. 
Um, so everyone is doing their best to reach out to each other. Um, but we are doing some on purpose things. Um, our COO, Emily, and our, our lead coordinator, um, Jennifer Zinnert, they've got a whole, whole calendar plan for touches for our agents. Um, but in the mornings, they're having um, meetings. You know, the staff has a, a morning meeting just to make sure, you know, everybody's, you know, in a good place. Everybody that needs help is getting help. But we like last week had um, a, a spirit week, we called it. And every week, every different, every day we had a different theme. So we had a Christmas theme, we had hat day, we had throwback Tuesday, we all just, you know, um, dressed up in different decades, Zoom meetings, right? And then we take the pictures, we make a grid and we, you know, we post it just to show that we're, we're united, um, trying to keep it lighthearted because this is heavy and um but purposefully connecting so lots of meetings on zoom lots of meetings um the group different groups are getting together the listing teams our leadership group our staff um we have a slack channel that is you know specifically built for just um updates for the coronavirus you know so what's happening around us what is the government saying where are the loans what's going on you know we've started, we had to like move to a specific Slack channel for that. So they know where to go find that information. Um, and then, you know, they're having uh, like tonight, we have a, a happy hour scheduled together at five. Um, and the, the team is put together like, hey, everybody today, let's, um, you know, call all of our C buyers or let's write, cards with their down time just being really on purpose in calendaring those touches yeah great so being that you're in a large market uh knowing that orlando uh, was hit pretty hard and anytime we've had a market shift what are you seeing with market trends in your area i know you said with your team you had a lot of pent-up demand or a pipeline that you're flushing out still but what are you seeing with market trends in your um, area and then the advantages possibly for buyers and sellers to continue to enter the market where you are. Yeah. Well, uh, we are, we're lucky that we, we live in Orlando. So we're a desirable market just inherently. Um, weather's great. Um, our city is in a big growth mode with medical, which falls right in line with this pandemic. Um, so we've got a lot of people relocating here. Uh, people want to come here. They want to get away from, um, you know, the north, the cold, the thousand square foot walk-ups at this point if they've been housed in there with 10 people. Um, so we are desirable. We are anticipating um, a push of sellers when, when this lifts. Um, I think that a lot of people are going to be stressed financially. Um, right now access that equity and if they've lost a job um, they may need to sell to access their equity or they may, may be behind in payments and need to move the property to to get that equity instead of letting it go into um, default so we anticipate a wave of that we also anticipate um, investor fatigue you know right now people can't pay the rents um, it's stressing their families because they're having to carry more than one mortgage. Um, the vacation rental market here that was so hot, the Airbnbs that were so hot are, um, you know, they're suffering and I think will continue to suffer for the rest of the year. Um, so they're going to be fatigued. They're going to be like over it. I think we're going to get a lot of calls to list those properties just because they're going to, they're just going to want to pull their money. I also think people have been waiting for the top of the market to sell. And, you know, Gary Keller used to say to us, we never know we're at the top of the market until we're on our way down. And um, so I think people are equating the stock market coming down to the housing market coming down, whether that's accurate or not, it's public perception. I think people think that we are at the top and we probably are really close, if not at it, if not on our way out on the other side of that. So um, people who are trying to time the market, I think are gonna move their homes as well. So I think we'll see an influx of, 
of sellers. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is in our market, we had a lot of iBuyer activity. We had Zillow offers, OfferPad, Open Door, Red. We had them all, right. and um, they're all currently on the sidelines. We'll see if they stay there. They're having, I would imagine, liquidity issues. Um, and how long can they pull out? And all of their partners that they have have to do something with the teams that they've built around this. And so it's going to be like launching all over again, um, which I think is going to prove to be difficult. So we kind of hope that the iBuyers stay on the sidelines. Um, with that being said, though, we were a Zillow Offers partner and we're getting leads off the top funnel. So we kind of hate to see that go. But what was happening is we were losing opportunity to the iBuyers. We weren't even getting the calls. They were getting the calls and, and absorbing quite a bit of market share on the list side um, that we would have gotten before that. So in our world, the iBuyers going away, I think opens up a lot of opportunity for us for those seller calls. So we are making sure that all of our agents are up to speed on both buying and selling and where our, our model used to be, you know, only buyer, only seller. Um, every agent now is hybriding because we see that market kind of balancing a bit. And um, and I and I really do think that that seller market. I don't think we're going to shift to like a buyer's market because the demand is still high and the interest rates are still low. Um, I think maybe we'll see more of a balanced market or a temporary dip, but come back to balanced. Um, you know, kind of easy to buy, easy to sell um, is what we're kind of hoping for, but who knows who can predict the future. Um, but I think, you know, I think that's what we'll see. And, um, and just based on, you know, the other markets we've been through in the past, it's what we're anticipating. Yeah. When you think about those iBuyers leaving the market, do you have teams of investors that are looking to pick up properties that you currently work with? Or is that something that you would start to focus on through your agents to seek out those investors for those frictionless type of transactions that you were losing to those iBuyers? Yeah. Yes and no, um, because a lot of the investors are uh, pulling back right now because, you know, some most of those same investors have money in the stock market or have been called on margins. And, you know, so just liquidity across the board is just, um, you know, questionable. And then also people are a little gun shy at the moment, not knowing how this is all going to shake out. Um, but some people have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for this opportunity for, you know, a distressed market to hit. Um, people are tired of the stock market and want to put their money into sure thing at like real estate. So I think we'll see that rebound a bit. But right now, um, I just think a lot of people, a lot of the big investors and the institu institutional investors have have pulled back and are on hold for a minute. Sure, sure. So let me ask you, how has this changed the way you're doing business? Well, it's funny, I was uh, telling Bill, I had a listing team meeting yesterday and we were discussing how we're doing this digitally and it's working, right? Because these sellers want to get their house on the market. They want to be first. So, they, you know, pandemic be damned, they don't care. They want their house on the market. Um, so figuring out how to do this digitally and, um, you know, using Zoom and Zillow 360 tours and Matterport and all of the tools we're all using right now, we're finding that this is, this is possible. And um, I was telling my team, you know, we have to build these digital systems and I'm like, build them to last. This isn't going to be temporary because don't tell me that you don't love taking listings by your pool. So I know that when this comes back on, you're going to say to the sellers, you know, we could do it by FaceTime and Zoom, or I can come and sit in your house at dinner time if you want, you choose, you know, and uh, they're like, no, we're going to go to the listings like you lie, you're not. <laughs> um, so I just think we're, I think the whole industry is going to find that we can do this digitally. Um, we don't need brick and mortar as much as we think we do. And um, so what we're building now is probably going to stick. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do you think this, the adding of the digital space will give you an advantage in the future for working with clients? I think everybody's going to get right on board with that. Um, I just think, I think the whole industry is going to shift that way. Um, the fact that we were able to get like our title company approved with the uh, re remote online notary Okay. Uh, banks are getting on board with the remote online, online notary. 
um, that's going to be nice so that our sellers can sign wherever they are um, and not have to come in on moving day and everything else. Um, I think that will will stick as you know as long as we don't have you know as long as it's done well and they don't have too many glitches. I think that will move for, continue to move forward with the lenders and get approvals. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know will buyers buy homes um, off of virtual tours uh, when they don't have to? Probably not. They're going to want to see the properties. Right. Yeah. I think you know. Would you buy a house off a virtual tour if you didn't have to? Um, so I think that um, we're going to have to get really good at defending our value as buyers agents um, because you know the list side becomes you know fairly easy to do from a seller perspective and um, can be replaced a little easier than the buy side. And so I think through this. That's not, you know, moving to a digital platform and doing it by our pool isn't going to help our our case yeah. to support our list side commissions. Yeah. So um, I think we just have to be aware that that mentality is probably going to shift, and we're going to have to get really good at buyer rep agreements and defending our commission. And, and with that being said, um, no one uses buyer rep agreements in Orlando, so you know we've got a long way to the future you know uh, maybe with the eye buyers being sidelined it's not in the, as immediate danger as it was but you know with with big companies coming in and taking large portions of market share all they have to do is say um, all right we don't want to play your coming soon game we're not going to put them on MLS we'll just put them on our own websites and um, you know do exclusive listings and and then MLS is gone so um, maybe with those big players out of the, you know, owning game at the moment, maybe we still have a chance, but we'll see. So yeah. just predictions. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's too true. You, you do have to defend that value of what you bring as a buyer's agent, as well as a listing agent. We can very easily do the listing presentation from the house. And at the same time, we don't know if their house smells like a kitty litter box. So at some point we still have to give them that range and, and go out and be honest with what we're looking for in pricing and that sort of thing. So, um, and can, um, I'm, I'm thinking back to our last that we had. That, that's right, that's right. They have to send the smell of their home in an envelope before we give them a price. <laughs> Maybe they'll get some type of technology for all you technology people out there that like is a, something on the computer that can give you that air quality test or something. I don't know. Oh, funny. I'm thinking back to the um, conference call that we had, you shared with us that you run pretty much a dependent model. And I think you alluded to earlier that, that there have been some changes in, in the expectations of your agents from the no longer are the days of go work your four leads, come back, we'll give you another, go, come back, close that one, we'll give you another. What, how have you shifted um, in order to keep your agents active, keep them working towards their goals and um, what are their expectations looking like right now? Yeah. We're not a, um, you know, just to preface this, we have never been a heavy prospecting team and, and we haven't been a high, you know, I the word accountability, but accountability team. Um, we, from a perspective of, I'm not going to tell my agents how many people they have to call today, what they have to do, what hours they have to spend, and they're not going to ring a bell when they get a lead mm -hmm. from that perspective. Now our, our systems hold our agents accountable to just production. You know, we have all productive agents. Um, so what we were seeing is one, uh, you know, we are, we do purchase leads and we purchase leads to fill the pipeline. So our newer agents take advantage of our leads more than our experienced agents mm -hmm. um, because they just don't have the database to, to um, work out of. Mm -hmm. As they are, you know, moving through the system and, you know, two to three years in the business, we expect them to be at about 50% repeat referral business, and we measure that. Um, it's not to a point where it's like, you. I'll give you one lead, you got to go sell another one, then you can have another lead. We don't do that. Um, all of our agents have different goals um, and expertise, but um, we do regularly train the benefit of working in their own database versus taking the cold lead from Zillow and um, having to, you know, try to turn that into something. 
um, the leads from their database tend to be higher value, um, more loyal, uh, they trust them out of the gate, and, um, and often are buy sells, you know, mm -hmm. so they, you know, two, two for ones. So once they get there, and we we have plenty of agents with evidence of success, younger agents want that see are, are wanting their business. So that, that just kind of inherently happens. Mm -hmm. um, but as a group, even our experienced agents right now, we are ha having regular conversations around, um, you know, digging deep. And we're all, we're all going to have to do this together. And if our um, pipeline diminishes, which we expect it to take a hit in the next couple of months, um, we don't anticipate laying off, but that may mean our transaction coordinators have to, you know, move over to lead generation for a minute. And, you know, they all have relationships with all of our past clients, just as much as our agents do. So, you know, giving them lists of people to connect with and call and, and, um, you know, just continue those relationships with, um, once we're allowed to go back out, I mean, deploy everyone to network and, and build and find in our database who has um, corporate leaders, who, who are the influencers in our database and, you know, going deep and, and finding those opportunities. Uh, but it will take all of us to do it. You know, it's not gonna just land on our inside sales and leadership to go uncover all of these opportunities. Um, so, you know, the only, the only thing I foresee if, you know, if somebody can't shift to that mindset or, or you know, situation, I would see that we would need to um, cut, you know, but it's really all hands on deck right now. And we've been doing that. So we have like our lead ISA's name is Danny. We have dialing with Danny on Thursdays and he dials in and on Zoom, they're listening him on the calls and he's giving feedback and um, we're having call nights where we're all, you know, sitting together on Zoom calling. Um, and we're, and then we have a, we put a lead coordinator in place that is going into the agent's fa uh, follow-up boss accounts to make sure that every, you know, nurture, every um, past client has kind of a what's next task <laughs> that they are in dialogue with every one of them um, and know where they stand. Book group page which is um, all of our past clients and our, um, you know, people who refer to us. And we do a lot of contests and, um, you know, giveaways in, in that group for um, just to stay in touch and stay in front of everyone. Um, but we're, we're working very hard at digging into our database that we already own and people who know, love and trust us. Yeah, yeah. When you consider you guys live in a really nice area um, for the weather mm -hmm. and do we, Hello. can you hear us? Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we got you all the way to the end of your statement. So um, considering that you live in a, a nice area for weather and as do I, the beaches are unfortunately closed. I'm, I'm sad about that. However, there are many agents out there viewing this as extended spring breaks, so a spring break 2020, the three week plan, right? What, what best practices or advice would you give to those agents that are there working and uh, maybe they didn't have a deep pipeline and they're working to continue to grow their business and have their business continue? You there? We'll get Jenny back here in just a second. Yeah, sorry. For some reason, we're a little choppy here. You there? Yep, I'm here. Um, you know, I think that you've got to think about, you know, in the future, um, where would, who do you know already that, you know, could get you into a networking pipeline, um, looking into the database that you already have. Um, like I said, who are your um, influencers? Who, who owns, it may, like, who's an HR director in your pipeline? Or who owns a small business that uh, may need help, you know, people selling their homes because they lost jobs or, um, you know, giving them that kind of, uh, business, uh, what do you call it? A, um, 
benefit, you know, like that they, the, the owner doesn't have to pay for where you could give them a discount if they give out your name to either sell or buy or relocate. Um, working with HR companies or working with attorneys, um, you know, divorce attorneys or um, probate attorneys, you know, right now everybody has a little more time on their hands. It's easier to get in touch of, with people. So, you know, learning a niche and starting to build that, uh, you know, network group, you know, through like maybe LinkedIn or people you know, um, getting really good on Facebook and managing groups or contributing to groups and being a resource for people is going to be huge because people will remember that you help them. Um, you know, right now it's a little awkward to try to pitch real estate to people. It's just, you know, you're gonna, it's not going to go well for you. But if you can be the resource and build that relationship that will pay off when this opens up. Um, and it's, you know, it, it should be what everyone has been doing every day all along, but it's always about how can you go find people to add to your database and build that foundation for your business. Mm -hmm. So is that adding five people a day? Is that a goal? Is adding 10 people a day? If you don't have anybody, you know, um, you know, you just gotta, you've gotta figure out who that is, where are you comfortable with your messaging and then dig deep. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember in 2008 when our market shifted, um, I mean, it, there were nights I slept in the office and like there were, I remember three nights specifically, I, we, I was there 24 hours trying to service banks and their portals and their all the craziness um and i had to double my units that year to make the same money i made the previous year and you know i would wear jeans to work because i'd have to climb fences and evict people and and um you know did i love that environment no i hated it that was the worst year in real estate but we still made money and we still grew our business and, uh, but it, you know, it's not going to always be easy. Sometimes you got to dig deep and do the ugly and we're going to, we're going to have to work hard through this. It's, you know, we're, it's going to take a minute. Yeah, it is. And, and I'm picturing more of you, Jenny, and this is just to share with the audience. I'm picturing you more in your jeans, doing your round off back handspring over the fence versus, <laughs> versus climbing the fence, the climbing, I'm seeing Mike underneath you boot, like just kind of <laughs> right, right. No, he's got my back way back right now. Oh God. Yeah. Those, those are miserable times, but it makes for good stories. It's like, Oh, back in the day I had to walk uphill in the snow. Like that's my snow story. Right. But you yeah. know, we, we made it through. And so it can't be that hard again. Yeah. When I look at too, there's a lot of people that, you know, in this industry now being at a record high for number of licensed agents, there's a lot of people in this industry who never experienced a down market. So they're basing their experience on the fact that we've been growing steadily over the last five years and they've been able to take advantage of, oh, my aunt's cousin needs to sell a house or my friend's brother needs to buy a house. And and the, the thought process around lead generation hasn't actually kicked in yet. Um, because they've been able to survive and really build healthy businesses on charisma and connection. And so yeah. I think looking at now, as far as lead generation, like you said, we don't want to be or come across as insensitive, but we want to be consistent with reaching out to people and providing value to those people um, in our network so that we can build those pipelines when we come out the other side of this, for sure. Yeah. Um, with, with your... With your agents, just out of curiosity, because we have um, several people on the call that have um, teams, large teams that are working to either hold their agents accountable or create accountability measures around number of calls or people in the database or connections. Are you doing anything with that with specific minimums or is it just an ex ex expected time? What are you looking at with your team for making sure your people are staying on task? We, we just don't, we just, um, you know, and I, we're just so unique because so many of my agents have been with me for years um, mm -hmm. that we're just, we just don't micromanage. We just really expect people to see their businesses within our business um, mm -hmm. as, you know, I mean, that's their income. That's, that is their, uh, that's how they feed their families. So, um, you know, hopefully that motivates them enough Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if they want accountability, if they feel like they're the type that needs to be told, you mm -hmm. know, Mike, Mike will talk to, for them to check in, make sure they're up, they're doing the thing, what's their plan, 
you know, we have that in place if the agents want it. But ultimately, we are we're more of a um, you know productivity is the accountability. Um, we can see if they're working or not, and it doesn't cost us any more for them to not work because we're in control of our leads. They're not burning through leads um, if they're not if they're not active and working. They just don't get leads. Um, so it's really up to them to either plug in and build a business with all of the resources and tools and structure we give them mm -hmm. or not, but we're not going to try to put a square peg in a round hole if they're not going to be willing to do it. I mean, it's just not where we're going to put our energy, but you know, like I said, all of our agents are productive. We don't have the brokerage with a bunch of, you know, hangers ons that, you know, are, are just there with their license. Um, that's just not how we are, are built. Um, mm -hmm. But we, if someone is struggling and they're trying, you know, we're going to obviously dig in with them. Um, but right now, we just haven't seen that yet. You know, most of them are 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 still doing okay. Good, good. Um, I know you referenced a few minutes ago about your admin, how you're working to um, keep all of them on staff, and you're having to change a little bit of the expectations you have around them. Um, that's a conversation we've had many times in our coaching calls around what am I doing to get keep my admin busy. Um, you know, we've alluded to dig into the project list that you've, all the things that you've said you wanted to incorporate over the last 24 months and have never done. Um, what are some things that are adjustments you're making with your administrative professionals to help keep the team moving forward, help them help the team move forward with the agents and communication and that sort of thing? Yeah. So far, we haven't had to yet, knock on wood, because we still have had the pipeline to keep everyone business busy, but I anticipate um, you know, we've take we in our system. We always note uh, for our clients who their agent was and who their transaction coordinator was, so we can easily print down um, lists for our transaction coordinators to touch base with. Um, you know, it is diving in on those projects that we don't have completed. So, you know, we're we're revamping our listing paperwork while we have time and. We're redoing our condo paper. Like, there's a few projects that we are kind of pushing forward right now because we can have time to think and implement. Um, but I, I think that like, it's going to come down to teaching everyone where you know instead of just having our marketing department out there working the Facebook groups and working social media, it's training everyone across the board to you know give them the messaging and then have them deploy and go in and and you know, kind of build that brand, um, mm -hmm. you know, just exponentially. Mm -hmm. And um, so it could be, you know, social media, it could be phone calls, it could be networking, um, really going through exercises of who do we know that mm -hmm. we're not tapping into. Um, right. And then, you know, implementing all of that. So, and then, you know, behind that building marketing funnels based on, let's say, if we determine short-term rentals are gonna be an opportunity, then we're building behind the scenes these short-term rental marketing funnels to drive traffic in from, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, YouTube, whatever, you know, they do um, to keep that phone ringing to keep us in business. But yeah. we are blessed that, you know, we've been in business 20 years, the phone is still ringing. Um, mm -hmm. We're not pulling back on our marketing spend, even if we don't see a large return on investment now, um, we're in it for the long game and we see those leads as pipeline fillers and, you know, building that database for the agents. So, um, we're not pulling back. If anything, we're, we're going to push forward and even potentially buy more, just making smart choices with that. Yeah. Well, and that's, that was one of the, the big conversations we've been hearing quite often is flash expenses drop 20%. You know, you and I were in that, that period where they say, cut everything, review your bank statements, review your credit cards, slash, slash, slash. So when you think about your business, and I love to hear that you're, you're one, evaluating ROI and then two, evaluating future ROI, what are those things, if any, that you have given thought to cutting and um, what would you consider cutting or what are you doubling down on as well? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm married to a CPA um, and a conservative one at that. So um, preface that. <laughs> My, you know, and we came through 2008. So we have always run with profit in mind um, and we've led with revenue 
So we are not in a position where we have a bunch of fat on the budget because we just don't operate that way. We have one location and we serve 94 zip codes because we didn't, we didn't feel like we needed a bunch of brick and mortar and rents and everything else. Um, where we spend the majority of our money on lead generation and staff. Um, so there's not much cut. I think we cut a Dropbox account for $12 a month. That's what we found to cut. Um, but evaluate, let's say realtor.com just came out with a new program and whenever they come out with one, we get the first call and we can buy it. Well, those were for Facebook leads. Those are longer game leads, a little cheaper than, you know, the, um, the, the leads on houses, but I would probably cut those and go for the more immediate lead to fill the pipeline now versus trying to, you know, build a big nurture database and spend the money there. I would try to go find the now business. Um, so we're moving some of our investment within realtor.com or Zillow around to our most successful notes because the zip codes are going to become available because everybody's going to panic and, and pull their money back from those systems. We're, um, we're going to go forward because this is our opportunity to take the market share, but we may get rid of some of the wishy-washy stuff that we were throwing money at for um, relationships or the long game. Right. You know, so Facebook leads might on. Yeah, for you guys. Um, when you can consider the opportunity in front of us, because, um, you know, every crisis leads to opportunity um, or advantage, what do you see as the greatest opportunity coming out from underneath um, this pandemic for real estate? We'll get Jenny back here in just a minute. I think I'm back. Are you there? Yep, yep there you go. So what do you see as the um, greatest opportunity? Um, I just, I mean, I, I just, I mean, the opportunity is the fact that um, a shift is gonna clean up our market a bit. Um, all of the part-time agents are probably gonna get washed out of our industry um, temporarily anyway. And, um, you know, the eye buyers are out. So there's more opportunity on the seller side. But I just think, I mean, real estate is still going to be um, important and um, people are going to buy and sell homes. So the opportunity is to be there ready to catch it and, um, and you know, kind of set up your, your systems to do so. So like we're changing our marketing messaging towards sellers right now, um, trying to be the, you know, the resource and be empathetic to, to people who are, um, hurting financially or need to access that equity. I think that's going to be the opportunity. Um, you know, really uh, studying and understanding the economics that are going around us and the um, opportunities for our buyers and sellers and resources and um, and then being, you know, kind of just being junior economic uh, economists for our clients so they feel confident moving forward. You know, so just, you know, really staying learning based, but I just, I, I mean, I don't, the opportunity is real estate. Like, I mean, it's, it's going to be there. People are going to buy and sell. We just have to be there to standing to help them. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's a question I didn't prep you for when you think about, um, not that I prepped you for all of these, but when you think about um, where you're going to learn this information, maybe for somebody out there that is. I mean, obviously COVID-19 emails at, in an abundance in our email inbox, but are, is there anyone that you're studying, listening to, following for uh, up-to-date information, um, either for your area or, or nationally? Um, you know, I get all my news from Facebook. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> from lab coats. Um, my, the, uh, my husband does, my husband is uh, really the mind behind this whole operation. And so he's back watching the, um, you know, whatever he watches, CNN, CNBC, all of those things. Um, he's reading the Wall Street Journal. He's watching the, all of the press uh, releases from Trump and everything else. I'm not. Um, I'm more of the creative and the visionary. So whatever he tells me is happening, I, I translate that into our real estate world and figure out what we're going to do from there. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's coming in from all different directions. You do have to qualify it and see if it 
if it does matter, um, if it doesn't matter, you know, what to focus on, what not to focus on, because you can really get caught up in uh, feeling very overwhelmed by all the drama that's going on around us right now. Lots of emails swirling around about liability and e and and coverage. And I mean, come on, like who's going to, how are they going to ever prove anybody brought coronavirus into their house? Like just things we're just not going to even, we're not even going to bat an eye on. Um, I think if you just really stay focused on um, people and prioritizing people, taking care of the people that are in your charge um, and taking care of the community um, and, and just staying focused on that, you'll, you'll be fine. I mean, it, 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 my, my favorite saying is it will be, um, it will be like whatever it will be. And we just have to pivot. Like, yeah. so um, to answer your question, I don't know, my husband, my husband is the one that brings me all the information. Yeah. So I didn't ask that question ahead of time. Yeah, well, and uh, we uh, we live in the same world because Chris educates me, and then I have Bill on the other side. That I, I do stay in tune with a lot of it, but from the stock market side, I get it from over here. I feel like I don't have to go study because I've got two people chirping and one in each ear telling me what I need to know. So, and I think it's important too. You make, you make a really good point to know what's going on in your market specifically. So for us, I find it interesting. We don't have eye buyers in our market because we're a small market. And I had someone text me and say, "Oh my gosh, can you believe the eye buyers have pulled out?" And this was from an agent. And I thought, well, that's amazing, but it impacts us at zero right now. So I think that's a great message at the same time goes <laughs> anyway. So, okay, share that with your clients if you want. I'm going to choose not to. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's at what level are you locally impacted with various things that are going on? Um, you know, across the nation. So um, when you, because I want to allow time for some Q&A and I know Bill's managing that side of it. So when you think about coming out the other side, what are we going to hear about the Weimar group? What message are you going to leave? Keeping us in suspense. You know, I just, um, it was funny because you did, you sent me that question and said, what, the, what would the headline be? And I put that to my team because uh, I just thought it was a nice question. And um you know, my first instinct was that um, we, you know, we we stay we we prioritized well and came out on top. But I think that um, you know, my one of my team members said Ubuntu. That's our saying on the team, and it always has been, and it means I am because we are, and, and that we are stronger together than we are apart. So. Um, I think, you know, because we went into this together and strong with a good culture, we're going to come out on top because we, we believe in each other and we believe on top. So, um, and everybody is committed to doing what it takes to get there. So I think Ubuntu would be, um, it works here too. Yes. Thank you. So what would be some uh, final words of wisdom? And then we'll turn it over to Bill for some additional questions. I think that, um, you know, I was going to tack on to an earlier question. Um, you know, it's our job to see around the, the corner. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, so I've been, uh, you know, default language because the majority of our team members haven't gone through that down market like you mentioned. They've never had to really work the short sales like we did or the foreclosures. I mean, they they're around, but not like it was, right? Um, so when the sellers start to call and they're behind a mortgage, what does that mean? What do you tell them? Um, when they, when they, when the uh, banks have put them into default and they're threatening foreclosure, what are the steps that, and what does that mean? And how do we help? Um, I taught our team yesterday again, but you know, they forget because they don't need it, but absorption rate. And what does that mean? And to start watching the trends of the market and uh, days on the market. So this, you know, giving them the scripts of, you know, like right now where we were pushing the market up with each listing because we're in an appreciating market, that is not a good strategy for our clients right now. We need to price, you know, aggressively um, on like a bracket to, you know, get a bunch of offers for the, when we first come out of this, my anticipation is that we're going to see some people fire sales. So you don't want to chase that backwards. You want to be the first to go on the market, you know, so giving them scripts and education around those terms that we had to, you know, learn and utilize on a daily basis um, during that market 
you know, they just are uneducated about it. So just kind of seeing around the corner and helping them understand what all that means. Yeah, you make a really good point. That's, That's that we've talked about is that appreciation or the um, attrition rate and understanding like what is a seller's market versus stable market versus buyer's market. Cause I think a lot of agents aren't even aware of what that looks like. Cause it's been a seller's market for so long that, you know, we have a cushion at, at a certain price point and know that for various price points in your area too. Don't look at it as an overarching. So we can look at our market, anything under 250, there's like a month supply or it's actually 1.8 before all of this started. And so we have a long way to go from here to a stable market in that price point. However, we're gonna see differences in other price points as we as we continue to transition through this and uh, you know, projecting out our luxury market getting hit uh, pretty solidly from that with the, with the just jumping ship. And that's where we're gonna see some fire sales and that sort of thing just to get out from under it or, or for those owners to pull the cash out to go put in the stock market while it's low and all the various things that that happen with that luxury market for sure. Yeah. Well, and the banks just pulled jumbo mortgages back because they're having liquidity issues. So non-QM loans and jumbo loans are just being pulled at the tables and not funded. So that is gonna be a huge hit on that luxury market, not being able to get jumbo loans right now. And then, you know, the lenders yesterday just tightened up the requirements for like FHAs and things. And so, you know, they should, they need to, there's not enough money to fund all of the, the loans in the pipeline right now in the United States. Um, so they're going to have to tighten things up. And mm -hmm. so our, our sellers are going to have to get, uh, we're going to have to get our sellers used to paying closing costs again to offset cash needed for buyers. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be talking about discount points again. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we may end up seeing and some buyers may still have to sit on the sidelines because they, their credit got damaged during this or they can't get in, in that box. So we just have to work on finding the motivated and, and sell, yeah. the, sell homes to them until the other people can get, you know, their, um, get their life in order or whatever. That's not the right word. But. Yeah, ducks in a row. We'll go with ducks in a row. Oh, yeah. Life <laughs> in order is not so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, before I turn it over to Bill for questions, first of all, obviously I'm using the space at Nest Realty. So I want to thank my people uh, for Nest for allowing me to come in Corona free and, and occupy their space. Uh, otherwise you would have had to listen to my three children and two dogs. So um, although that's fun sometimes, it's just uh, probably a little distracting. So Bill, what do we have for questions or what questions have you thought of as we um, talk through business with Jenny? Uh, well, Jenny, thanks again for being here. Uh, those of you who know me well know that the hardest thing for me to do is to be quiet for 49 minutes. And, and uh, so I'm thankful to have been able to do that. Great work on the interview, Debbie. Uh, so, Jenny, it's, it's one question. However, there may be a couple of different answers to it. So uh, watching us live or watching the recording, we've got individual agents. We've got uh, small teams or, or agents with admin. We've got uh, large producing agent teams, and then we've got brokerage firms. And so the question is, if you were to give one piece of advice, and it may be the same for all of them, or it may be slightly different for each. If you were to give one piece of advice to the individual agent, what would that be? And the small team and the large team and the brokerage firm on how they could thrive through what's going on right now, what would that be? Oh, boy. Um, you know, single agent is... Um, you know, just uh, you're going to have to outwork everyone and, um, you know, really push into that database with uh, networking and and um, and lead generation. Uh, I mean, that's it's the only answer. I mean, you can't you do, when they're when you don't have anything to sell. You got to lead gen. And so that's the only thing you can do. And so what you know, they have to understand what their strengths are and who they know and where they should start. But um, and then they just have to outwork everyone. Um, and then on the, on the teams that are not brokerages, you know, if, if, especially if it's a small to mid team, um, they're probably the most vulnerable because it's the most expensive team to run. Um, and so their instinct is probably going to be to pull back on marketing expenses. I would say, um, you know, you know, when you're a small team, you can bring everybody next to you and um, kind of lock arms and go forward together. Uh, you know, so it's really getting everyone on board to, um, you know, do what it takes 
as a group um, or not, you know, so they have a choice, but uh, it, you know, it's, you're not going to be able to just rely on your rain rainmaker to uh, make things happen. And, and I, you know, I love those days of being a small group because you can, you know, you just rely on each other. You just, you know, like, hey, we're in this together. I don't have to be out in front as a leader. Like, let's, what are we going to do and involve people in the decisions you're making, bring them along um, so they have buy-in, but that they're also proud of what you got, what they're accomplishing and staying together. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of team building and um, cheerleading for in that for a small team, I would think, uh, and maybe even having you know the team members you know kind of contribute to that, where it's not all on the rainmaker. Where what what can we all do together to come through this? Um, as a bit as a, a team brokerage, um, you know, hopefully they were they were running. Uh, slim in margin, very conservatively. Uh, personally, uh, we have no expenses, so you know we don't we don't have to uh, pay ourselves before we pay our team. Um, we're committed to you know bringing our team along. So I think that if you know if they are if they have a bunch of um, luxury or a bunch of offices, I would try to you know slim that down and protect your staff in prior time, they should personally um, attack their bus. Uh, that's, you know, it's too bad if they are. But I, I think that, again, um, building a culture, working together, trying to figure out what they're going to do together to get through this is going to be super important. But um, hopefully they shave the, the excess first before they shave people. Um, and then the big brokerages, you know, it's just, you know, coaching the individual agents to go dig deep, you know, <laughs> I mean, right. it's, everyone's going to have to dig in. It's not going to be easy. It's just not going to be easy. Sure. Sure. Got it. Uh, well, thanks for tackling that question. Great answer. Debbie, anything else on your end before we wrap up with Jenny today? No, one thing that I heard her say was about Spirit Week, and we, we've been doing that at my house, too. So I think that would be fun for all of our teams or individuals that are watching this, and maybe it's at staggered times that they get to see this interview. So incorporating that Spirit Week and post it on Facebook, let us see what you're doing. I think that would be fun. So, Bill, what are we going to do on Monday? Yeah. Look at me scared. Hey, you're you're the, you're the director of fun around here. So, uh, you, yeah, that is all you. Okay, then Monday is wear your University of Georgia attire. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, that's tricky. That is tricky. Um, well, Jenny, hey, thanks for being here. As always, great to hear from you. Great to hear your perspective. Debbie, thank you for doing the interview. Well, well done. Uh, those of you who uh, are either watching this live or end up watching the recording, if you have any Orlando-related referrals, the Weimert Realty Group, I'm sure we'd be more than happy to handle them. And uh, thanks again for joining us, everybody. Have an awesome day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Take care. Stay safe. See ya.